recording going. Um, and I will introduce you guys to Jessica Wachowski. Um, you know, uh, Angie made a great introduction to us. The, what, the sort of idea of like um, having this conversation around mindfulness or just really being attentive to our, our personal sort of needs, emotions, what's sort of going on right now, not only right now, but like in all the madness, right? Even if there isn't COVID, there's madness. So um, to be able to have this conversation and um, really be able to be guided through whatever it is we need to hear or, or say um, right now, I think is just so important as it is always. So um, thank you again, Angie, for making that connection with Jessica. So Jessica is a licensed certified social worker. Um, she's a certified emotionally focused therapist, and she's also the owner of the Vail Relationship Institute. And um, so today we're going to talk about how to connect more deeply with ourselves, with others, um, and really the world during these challenging times. I will note um, that um, Jessica has, you know, we've got her for little less than an hour now, um, and so we'll hopefully make the most of it, but please feel free to chime in, ask any questions, either in the chat or unmute yourself and ask. Um, Jessica really likes to engage with all of us, even if it's virtual. So I will hand it over to you. Okay, all right, sure. Yeah, I think this is really, um, really amazing and just, powerful that that your community again is creating this space okay this space for you guys to come together and like you were saying holly have this type of conversation that i'll help guide us in because there's so much that we tend to even subconsciously keep kind of trapped inside and that's kind of what our theme will be today is exploring like what's what might i not be fully aware of what am i attaching to what's building up inside and because when we don't have these spaces to feel like we can kind of start to open up and dig in um, it really only contributes to the stressful experiences we're we're having that we can't even avoid that we're you know kind of powerless to right now you know i know you said regardless of covid we live high stress pretty chronically stressed lives at this point now this whole way of of living you know the, the constant shifts and health concerns and uncertainty is only compounding all of this for us in ways that we're not even fully conscious of okay and so um i just think this is really admirable that your organization is prioritizing this and have asked me to come back and i'm coming back next month and i think it's just so great to like meet with you all um and get to know you like that was something i was feeling uh thinking about meeting with you all today is i i just want to get to know your community better so i know you know what is impacting each of you personally and professionally, I know we spoke a little bit about that last time around this kind of myth of work life separation and, and the idea of balance where it's all just, it, you know, we are who we are. We show up at work as who we are. There's not this separate self thing. And that's kind of, you know, a contributor when we're separating ourselves to try to fit in boxes and compartments we're not really being our whole our whole being um so you know as today i kind of want to start with guiding us in in kind of a meditative practice um, to help us find some calm in this said madness and continue with doing some of the check-ins that that we did last time so i think um if i'm remembering i think that holly and angie i think outside of you two everybody else is new but i might be mistaken um but we'll see yeah. as we go along hopefully a couple more will will yeah. join um but yeah we're the we're the old school now <laughs> <laughs> oh geez you know <laughs> so it is um if you're new to meditation or it's been a while no big deal right that's i'll kind of guide us there's no right or wrong way to meditate that's one of the first myths is like if i don't have this clear mind or if i'm having thoughts i'm doing it wrong no it's actually you're doing it right every time we notice i'm having a thought so that's actually an indicator of like ooh, 
yeah, we're doing it. We're doing the practice. Okay. So what I'll just offer, um, you know, some people like to, when, when I guide meditations on zoom, some people like to turn the video off. I don't really care. I'm closing my eyes, whatever. Um, and so if you can just, yeah, begin to close your eyes, um, or if that's uncomfortable, just do a soft gaze down into your lap. Um, however you're sitting, let's just, you know, bring ourselves into a conscious posture. So what I mean by that is let's really sit up straight and tall, that strong straight back, roll your shoulders back to open up that heart space, especially at the end of a long day. Let your hands just fall into your lap. If you're not able to sit with your legs crossed, make sure that they're, they're planted on the ground and you can feel the floor beneath your feet. And I offer to have your palms open, facing up. That's a gesture of, of being open and receiving. And just begin to inhale and exhale through your nose. There's no need to force a rhythm. Just let your breath be natural and organic, going the space going the pace that it's just called to do. And simply notice your breath. Noticing your breath coming into your body. Following that breath deeper and deeper past your throat, past your heart, finding its way down to the core of your being. Allowing yourself to settle If the mind is racing from, from all that you did today and all that might be left to do, allow your breath to bring in a soothing energy, a calming force, releasing on the exhale, any tension, any angst, any worry. And arrive, arrive here in this moment. Allowing yourself to be fully present here and now. And with a curious mind, that's free of judgment. Notice where you might be holding tension in your body. Where might you feel tight or restricted? And just notice. with that curiosity, with love, with compassion, just notice those areas of tension. And breathe in through your nose with your next inhale, breathe in light into these spaces melting the tension, allowing yourself to relax and let go. Exhaling any of that angst with intention and purpose. and inhaling that warm light 
creating more space. As you exhale, what is tight, tense, and restricting. And those might be thoughts. And just notice what it's like to have a little peace, a little quiet, some space to check in with you. When was the last time you really checked in with you? And I'll invite you in this space to think of one word that might describe how you are emotionally. One word. Listen to what arises. And if judgments come in, release them on your exhale and simply listen and accept what shows up for you. Honor yourself for showing up to this space, for choosing you, for giving you this time, this space. Let's take an inhale, holding it at the top, and let's let it go through our mouth. When you're ready, you can come back into the room together, opening our eyes, and just feel what, you know, may have shifted in those, you know, five or so minutes. Just notice what your body feels like and what it's like to just give that, 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 that space to you. Since we're in a smaller group, I'd like us to go around and simply state our one word for where we are emotionally. So we'll just say one word. So, you know, I'm Jessica. Emotionally, I'm feeling grateful. And so we can just bop around. So whoever wants to go next. I am Holly, and I am emotionally open. Hmm. Okay, this was a weird word to come up for me emotionally, but it kind of depicts my life the last couple of weeks. So my uh, word was fragile. Hmm. I love it. Great. The next one was basket case, but I'm going with fragile. Okay, <laughs> <bye>. <laughs> Hi, Mickey. My word is hopeful. Mm. I'm, I'm Casey. Um, and after all those, my word was aggressive. Yeah. Um, maybe short temper. Yeah. So, but I, li I like your words better. So I'm going to try to get there. Casey, let me just hold you. Your word is perfect. Okay. Aggressive, right? Honor what is yours. Yes, 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 yes. Cindy, are you with us? All right. All right. So what I want to notice, um, I, we didn't do this last time, did we? Okay. So um, we did some other different exercises. What I like about this, this is also part of what um, I mentioned this last time about I, I hold these, these mountain women um, gatherings and groups every week. And this is how we start to check in. We ground ourselves. We actually do a four part series. We do emotionally, physically, spiritually, relationally. And we do one word for each. And this is just a quick way for us to ch practice checking in. I'm like, where am I? What's true for me? Okay. And we keep it to one word, which like, think about it. What was that like? 
if, if a few of you could share, like, what was it like to keep it to one word? You know, it, for me, it was kind of surprisingly easy. It's like the word just popped in my head and like no other word made sense. And I overthink everything. So I think in a way I was like, well, no, that's not it. I started to do that in my head and I'm like, shut up. That's the word. That's what it nice. is. Nice. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Great, great. Anyone else have an experience of like the one word? Mine was interesting. Like I thought, oh, I'm, you know, I am open, but then I also, and I, and I definitely don't understand where it came from, but it just, my second word that popped into my brain was stable. Mm. I don't know. I don't know what, I, I don't know where that is, where that's You don't have from. to know, right? So this is, yes, I love it. Yes. And we're kind of experiencing this, this, almost like tug of war that our mind wants so much control most of the time. And here, right, we're just, we're just learning how to trust what comes up. It's, it, we call it a bottom up rather than top down. And this is much more like intuitive. It, it just kind of shows up and, and it does like what, what both Holly and Angie are saying and experiencing of like, yeah, it just was, that's my word. Right. And sometimes the brain's like, but we must know why, like, what is it? Like, how come? And we want to like dissect it all. And that's really learning how to go shh and just let it be. And this is part of the exercise of choosing one word really grounds us. You can kind of feel the anchoring of it rather than getting caught and swept away into the story, right? Of that logical mind that goes, why? Are you sure? I don't know, Angie. Maybe you should think more about that. Is that really the word, you know? Um, and then when we tell each other, you know, even as listeners, as we hear someone's word, you know, that I feel it of like, oh, I want to know like, well, what, what do you mean by fragile? Like, ooh, aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know more, right? Can you feel that part of us? That's like, yeah, I want to know more. And the part of you that maybe wants to explain what's up with your word, what's behind it. Did you guys feel that at all? It's different, right? Like when we just say one word and we don't load it up and it helps us, you know, simplify and clarify. And that's where it's a really, you know, it's simple. It's pretty easy. It takes a few seconds for us to do this really clear check-in and it helps us learn how to quiet the mind and just allow it to be there without needing all the extra stuff. And then with that desire, it, it kind of um, even makes it clearer our, our kind of pull, our desire to, to connect and know more about each other right? Like, ooh, I want to know more. I'm so curious. And when we slow it down and we give it space, it kind of, um, I don't know, I think it kind of becomes even more meaningful. Uh, and we pay attention a little bit more when we're not just getting overwhelmed with all of it. Is that making sense? I'm seeing some heads nodding. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is great for those of you who maybe work with teams or even with your like partners or friends, like this is a great, simple exercise to, to just be like, where are we emotionally? What's your word? Oh, wow. Tell me more. Right. So it could be a cool way to kick off team meetings, things like that. Um, I know Cindy's typing in the chat box. So if you guys don't have that open, I don't know if that's automatic, but I know I just want to recognize her that her word was peace and many words come up, but peace wants to dominate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We want to listen to that. Like, oh yeah, that's my word. Um, so, you know, that's just a way of us again, connecting in. Because if we pause right here, I kind of offered this in the meditation of when was the last time you really checked in? You really got quiet, you got peaceful, and you just listened. And you got curious with you, right? I said, leave the judgmental mind out of this. If it comes in, ask it to move aside and let's just get curious. Well, how did we notice, you know, our bodies? Where did we notice tension showing up? 
Were we aware of that before we got kind of curious? Did you notice parts of you that maybe wanted to judge the experience you were having? Yeah, anybody? As we walked around, okay, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Oh, wow, look at that part of me. Look at that part of me that's so judgy all the time. Wow, she's got a lot to say. <laughs> Uh-huh. And that thing's going on autopilot all the time when we're not doing these practices of checking in and learning how to quiet that mind, right? This is practice. I like that word practice um, rather than, than work because it's something we have to continually do. And checking in with ourselves is so crucial when we are in this kind of said madness, where right? we can often feel so overwhelmed and swept up and, and lost in it. Like, where am I in all of this? And that kind of, you know, I, I want to hear about where you guys are at this point. I think last time with the community, you know, there was this, this kind of transitioning. Some people were getting back into work. And, and I just, I do, I really want to hear from you all about what's affecting you. What's causing you a sense of stress and distress. So if we could just open that up a bit. Um, okay, well, I've been back to work um, now for a month. It's been a month, and I want that girl back. <laughs> we're waiting. We're, we're going to get her back. Um, and, and so, yeah, it does change, and it changes every day, um, right? Like the mindset, and, you know, I, for me, I'm in a place now where, um, you know, I've got a few people back to work, and that's great. I want more. But yet there's this uncertainty of potential shutdown again. And, you know, people not following the mask rules, which, by the way, I am the mask police. I've redesigned my job description. And uh, I'm just waiting to kick somebody out. I'm kind of itching mm. to kick somebody out for it because I'm so over it. Mm. Um, I'm like, don't even test me. And, but, but part of that feeling is translating now to my kids at home. And I'm a single mom. And so... You know, I don't have a partner to kind of lean on when I'm feeling fragile and mm. anxious and no patience and, and all these things. And the kids are, they're going crazy and they're in heightened emotional states. Yeah. So, so I'm in that place now trying to figure out balance again. Um, and that these calls are great because I think that's what we're talking about is trying to create some semblance of balance in a chaotic environment. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Angie. Ugh. What else? What's, what's impacting you, whether it's work related or just personally, like think about like what's really causing you the most stress right now? I think in my case anyway, we've been back since uh, Mother's Day. Mm. It's, I, don't, I feel like before everything, with a lot of our staff, I had a lot more patience, um, a lot more understanding. And now I know that everybody's going through something and not even just with the pandemic, but every day we come to work and our windows are bashed in and we're right by the Capitol from the protests. So there's wow. just constant reminders of absolutely everything that's going on in the world right now, rather than just kind of this COVID bubble, everybody put your masks on when you come in kind of thing. It's just everywhere. Um, so I instantly go to judge my word being aggressive, but I just feel like it's not my personality to be a super aggressive person. So now coming into work and just being very, um, just having a short fuse and trying to refine that balance of how to kind of cope with what I'm going through, but also what our staff is going through. And, um, I mean, I got my supervisor promotion a week before COVID happened. So now... I'm in this new position of being kind of in management and it's just a really, really weird adjustment. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's kind of what I'm struggling with. I know John's probably struggling with that too, um, to an extent. So it's just, it's weird. Is that the John I met last time? Well, okay. 
<laughs> yeah. He was supposed That's to join us today. <laughs> he needed a break. Yeah, he needed a break. So far away. Yeah. Take a day yeah. off. Check out. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> Holly, do you have any thoughts on your own experience of stress? Yeah, I mean, I think um, probably much to um, some similarities with Mickey and that we're kind of waiting for that moment to be called back to work and to feel needed yeah. in that way and to feel that we can contribute to um, to sort of kind of the craziness that's happening right now, C contribute to, to, to um, I guess, suppressing that or supporting, you know, our, 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 the person that we report to or, or our business. And so I, I think the one thing, you know, I mentioned it last time, maybe I might've even written it in the chat. I tend to like, when sort of chaos or uncertainty or um, like this, period of time like this happens and all of a sudden like things are just snatched away um, and and you don't know what's happening next I tend to I tend to get into that fight mode um, I don't I, I don't know I don't know that I can necessarily get to the flight but I I tend to get in that fight mode and I then start to fight for something that you know I believe in and sort of shift my focus and almost like kind of put aside you know, what the real issue is over here. So that, not that I like to sweep things under a rug. I'm actually someone who really likes to address issues, to be honest with you. I don't like it, but I, I just, I find it, I find it extremely important and, and I like to resolve it um, and not have it hang around. But I, but there are things certainly that are totally out of our control like this, yeah. that sometimes I just, like I put it aside and I start to just shift my focus onto something else. I think my stress kind of, is when am I going to go back? Am I going to go back? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's more so if I don't go back, is my team going back? Mm -hmm. And how to, from that workplace mindset, how is my team really doing? Oh. You know? And that stresses me out, like not knowing truly how they're doing. And being able to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them and check in with them and talk through whatever they're, they're feeling. Because oftentimes that helps me, right? Just that ability to talk to someone, like hear what's happening with them to go, gosh, oh my gosh, I'm feeling the same way. Or I can empathize or because I, I have been there before or whatever. But I think the other thing like that sort of like, <laughs> that's my stressor is like, you know, this association is so, it's just, it's it's happening so fast and i think that's a wonderful thing um but i'm like i do second guess myself um especially when i don't have a barrage of emails coming in with interest or questions i'm like what am i doing is this even going to be successful like yeah. you know i i've i've taken this on and i don't start something without finishing it like it's going to be big we're going to go big or we're going to go home like that's how i roll and that's that's a little stressful right now, especially with some of the changes that are coming, positive changes, really. But I would hate to just fail miserably. Oh, thank you for sharing that. I just really hear the the truth and honesty and just vulnerability in everything you shared. Um, and it's just impactful to have you guys just really, I mean, all of you just share, you know, what's weighing on your hearts in a real way. Um, Mickey, what about for you? Kind of what Holly said, you know, yeah. I'm waiting to go back, but my word is hopeful because, you know, I haven't been laid off. So I've moved so much over the years, like the last 10 years, my husband and I have moved every two years. And, you know, even as, as scary as it is, it always works out. So I'm always just like, well, mm. something will come, you know. I still have my job. My husband had an interview today and it went great. And so I'm trying to just be like, hey, this is the first time in a long time that I haven't had the barrage of emails. So just trying to make it count. 
I appreciate not yeah freak out. Yeah. Okay. I hear in that that like some some really just lovely wisdom for all of us around this this idea of hopefulness. You know, trusting, um, and, and and yeah, finding. It's not you know finding what what is good here, right? It's not nothing is all bad. Nothing is all good. Okay. And sometimes when it feels like, oh, those scales and it's feeling heavy on one side, we got to do some extra work for our brain to notice what's, what's still working here. What's still great and good about our lives. Um, we tend to notice, we have a bit of a bias, um, with our mind and it notices, uh, negative negativity much quicker. Um, and it takes about, I, I, I think I'm quoting this right about 10, 10 more positive things to to counteract one negative right so 10 times more positive to per one negative thing or experience so it takes work um that's where like you've probably seen things like gratitude lists and and things like that are, are good exercises that's why that's why and until we get in that again that practice and that way of seeing the world in that way we we have to help train and build those kind of emotional muscles um and you know what i hear kind of a common thread or just you know uncertainty uncertainty invokes fear and and it does that very quickly we like to know what's happening we like our comfort we like our routine and we can get stuck there, okay? I'm sure all of us here can remember times in our lives where we've gotten a little too cozy and we stayed and it stunted us from expanding and growing and evolving in different ways with who we are and how we need to be, okay? So we're, we're constantly, you know, there's the only uh, constant is change, right? So we're called to be growing and evolving. And so there is that opportunity here when we're in these places of discomfort. And that's where, you know, the question of what do we do with tough emotions, tough feelings, things that don't feel so good? What do we do when this happens? Maybe, right, Holly's kind of talking about, I tend to go into this kind of fight mode and I might kind of get distracted with other stuff that might be easier for me to kind of fight with rather than like this really daunting, uncertain, I'm not sure what the hell to do with this. You might find yourself go into kind of a freeze of like, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't know what to do. I'm just shutting down and like watching Netflix or whatever numbing out right we might we've seen a huge increase in um substance use um we you know i think there's a lot of humor around it but i think we also need to talk about it seriously too around this is just numbing out guys and and so there's that piece and then we can also um we can go into this kind of um bypassing of like it's fine no big deal it's all great and good and when we're not doing that you know i'm not really you know what mickey's talking about i feel is really healthy and balanced but i think we can either recognize within ourselves or have had this experience with other people where it feels dismissive like no this is really hard like it's not all great like i need you to hear like i'm struggling you know, and, and we can't just bypass the tough stuff either. So there's this, you know, there's this need for us to really become aware. That's why I'm guiding you in how, how to check in, getting quiet, getting still, and learning how to do these like kind of one word check-ins so that we can grow the awareness of what's true for me, you know, for you, Casey, you know, aggressive. I am feeling aggressive. Yeah, that needs to be noticed. That's great. Get curious, lean in. Just because it's not all hopeful or grateful, right? Like, I love the realness of that and the fragile, right? Like, I'm feeling fragile. Like, so much is pulling on me. I don't have patience. And I just, oh my gosh, I could break any minute, you know? And awareness is really like 75% of the game here. Because again, I think I've mentioned this last time around, what we're not aware of, we, we're powerless to. So then we accumulate all these emotions, these experiences, and we're not even aware of it. And then what happens? 
we get tripped in some way. Either we're exploding or we end up in a really deep depression. We end up somewhere that's not so great when we're not tuning in and paying attention to just what is. And, and so this awareness piece and then this acceptance piece. And this is where it also gets pretty tricky because when we become aware of it, we can kind of, right, we all kind of nodded our heads around noticing the judgment. Well, that shouldn't be there. There's something wrong, right? You shouldn't feel aggressive or how come this, right? We get all judgy and shamey with ourselves. And so with awareness, rather than judgment and shame, how can we lean into accepting whatever is here without needing to change it or fix it? That we just kind of, again, get curious about it. Like, oh, wow, okay. Oh, some aggression's here. Ooh, anger's here today. Mm, yummy. Let, let's see what you've got to say, right? Oh, maybe there's some sadness. And maybe there's joy and excitement. And right, we can see that that ego mind pulling on that thread going, wanting to, to, to know why and how come. And if it doesn't feel good, if it's uncomfortable, well, we need to fix this. We need to get rid of that. Right? How can we just be with it? How can we just let it have some space and say, ah, oh, Oh, yeah, I'm a human being. I'm made to feel all of this and begin to, you know, loosen up on this whole right and wrong way of feeling or being. Just loosen up on it. I'm not going to tell you to let it go because we got to first loosen our grip on it. And we have to first become aware of where is our grip tight? Yeah? And begin to notice because so much of this stress stuff, man, it is... It's prolonged and it's unrecognized. And then we mistake it as being normal. We, I, I, I think it's a few, few people who really know what their like true state of balance and homeostasis is. I mean, I think we all probably need like a two month true vacation to get back to like, ooh, oh, there I am, right? Like we live, we live at such a heightened state of stress. And so there is this thing, we gather these feelings, these situations, I mean, some of them aren't even ours. Like you all said, I loved it. It's so, it's really beautiful how connected you are to one another and your teams, you're worried about each other. I love hearing that. There's not enough of that in, especially like organizations and, and corporations that you're saying, I'm worried about my team. I'm not really connecting with them. I don't know how they're doing. And so, right, that's part of it. And then if we know somebody's struggling, we might right, gather some of that. And that's part of us being connected, relational, empathetic beings. But without awareness, we can start to kind of get our claws in it. We start to attach to the stress. Oh, yeah, it's really got a grip on me. Oh, my goodness, it's overwhelming me. It's, oh, it's really affecting me. I can feel myself get so drained and the anxiety. Oh, let me tell you about the anxiety, right? That's us attaching and getting pulled in to the story of it all. Is this making sense? It's okay, yeah, right? We can even hear it kind of seep out as we share. It's, and again, nothing bad or wrong. It's just, oh, let's pay attention to what is that story? What stories am I telling myself? about the situation, about the stress, about the uncertainty. What's the, what are those stories feeding? Could we kind of play with that a little bit? Could, could we share maybe some, oh, what's some stories? What are you going, oh yeah, I got a good story. You ready to go on? Sorry, I, I'm taking notes now. Oh like, yeah, this is like I'm so I don't mean to be disrespectful, but all of you, I mean, some of you really know me well. Um, you know, I've worked with Cindy, um, mm -hmm. and I I know Angie really well. We all know that I love stories, <laughs> and I tell a lot of them, um, and I I attach myself to the story. I I think like no matter what it is, no matter what it is. 
I attach myself to a story and I just, I guess, unload the story, if you will. But I, I, I'm trying to tap into like this idea of like, you know, what stories am I telling myself? You know, and I don't think that I've really sat down and like thought of, thought of it that way, right? I love telling a story about something I've done or something I'm planning to do or an experience I had, but I don't know that I've really sat down and been like, okay, Holly, what are you, what stories, whether they're positive or not so good, are you telling yourself in your own mind? Mm. I think if I, you know, sort of the first things kind of come up, I think sometimes I do tell myself that I, I, I can't do something. Mm -hmm. Like, or, or not so much like I can't do something because I'm always like, well, can't really isn't a word, you know, like you really, um, you know, you really can do anything you want to do and be anything you want to be and so on and so forth. But I think sometimes I put that wall up for myself and like, you know, I can only go so far and then I start, you know, worrying about everybody else and whether or not they can or can't and like trying to motivate them when I'm really just. I don't know, maybe trying to motivate myself to be a can do. Like don't be don't be afraid of the of the failure. And 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 I, I think failure is certainly a sign of success. But I think sometimes failure can can lead you to be like, this is just too much. Oh yeah. You can't keep going with this. You just gotta let it go. You know what I mean? And so I think if I if I really put that into thought right now, that's what comes to to thought of like telling me, telling myself these negative stories to myself that like, mm, I don't know that you're going to be able to push through that threshold. I don't know. I pray. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. I, I think that's so real. And, and, you know, it's, it's listening because these are sneaky, man. I mean, they can be kind of these, these like loud whispers in a way. And so it does require us to say, Ooh, what, what do I, how do I talk to myself? And when we're stressed, you know, it just, it, 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 it tends to be that negative storyline and it's fueling this, like, and it fuels the fear. Like you said, well, don't be, don't be scared of failure. Well, I might offer, yeah, be scared of failure. That's fine. Just be aware that you're scared of it. <laughs> it's different. It's different because we're actually separating from the fear rather than I am scared. Okay. Oh, look at the part of me that's scared to fail and mess up. We become that observer. Right. And that makes a world of difference when we're not so attached to these powerful, big emotional experiences. And honor, honor, love, accept that part of you that's scared. It's there for good reason. There's something that happened. It's part of being human, quite frankly. It's that simple. We don't have to go through some like bad experience to just be scared of messing up, but there probably is something there too. You know, you live long enough, you're going to know it hurts sometimes to mistake and fail. So, right, like this is my big thing. There's a lot out there that's telling us we got to feel different and be different. My message is the opposite. Embrace who you are, what you're feeling, because the more you resist, the more it pushes back, just like a little kiddo, <laughs> okay? Okay you're not gonna pay attention to me, I'm gonna get louder. And maybe our own selves, I can relate to that. <laughs> but that's our emotions, they, they're our wisdom, they're our guide. And if we're not gonna pay attention, man, they will work hard to get our attention because they're like, I got something for you. You got, I got something to tell you. That fear is an alert, like, hey, just be careful here, you know? So again, it's, it's not so much about, oh, we're feeling stress, we're feeling anxiety, and, and I shouldn't feel this way. I really uh, got to get a grip on my anxiety and, and get rid of it, right? So what medication 
medication do I need? What exercise? What do I got to do to get rid of this? Does it feel great for any of us to be rejected? Well, maybe anxiety feels the same way. When we feel into it, just like in that brief meditation, and we just bring attention, loving awareness, and go, huh, what's happening here? Oh, we got some tension. Let's just breathe into that a little bit, release it. Once we pay attention, things quiet down. They quiet down. And so there's this thing around just a lot. It's not clinging to it, right? We were kind of talking about the attaching to the story and how we can fuel it. Like, oh my God, like I'm so depressed. I'm so worried. I'm so anxious. And we can just like fuel it, right? That's kind of us attaching to the storyline and getting really like um, identified with these emotions and distress states. And then what we can also do is that, that, that resisting, the pushing away, the forcing, like I shouldn't, I shouldn't feel this way. And I need to, you know, when we force ourselves and we deprive ourselves, right. You kind of long for it. Like if you've ever done like a, a cleanse or a diet and you're forcing yourself to do it, you crave it more. Rather than, and, and if you've ever experienced just that, um, like I've had this, this recent experience where I just, I played with it for a while with going vegetarian, it's come and gone in my life. And then it just, it just felt, it literally felt like, a, a, like it just fell off. Like I just didn't desire to eat meat anymore. It wasn't a force. It wasn't an attachment to, it just was. That's kind of what we're looking for in some of this. Does this is what's resonating here? I'm just curious to check in as we we do make our way to a close. Or questions, right? Like I don't understand what you're saying. Like just yeah, talk to me a bit. I think it resonates because when everything did shut down, I was I was scared, I was in denial, I was like feeling depressed about myself and then one morning I was like I have to stop throwing myself a pity party, you know? I'm going to stop binging on Netflix. And my husband and I started building a routine. And that's kind of what helped me become hopeful. I was like, we still don't know what's going on. We're not working, but we just bought a house. We just got a puppy. And I was like, you know what? This isn't healthy. So we started focusing our energy on cleaning up the yard and fixing the house and having this time with the puppy that we didn't think we'd have. And not to say I still don't get scared and I still you know, give myself a little pity party now and again, but it's not helping us. So I keep having to just push forward. And in a way I do have to force myself into another mindset until it starts to feel natural. And once it does start to feel natural again, then I'm like, okay, this can't go on forever. You know, and today with my husband's job interview, it was like the first time where I was like, wow. And I spoke to Angie and I was like, yay, you know, there is a date, you know, there's a plan, there's something. It might be small, it might be, you know, not written in stone, but there's something and I just have to go forward from there. Mm -hmm. I love that, Mickey. Thank you. And, and my only guidance around just a little bit around that would be, you know, just honor the part of you that, that still gets scared. You know, when that fear shows up again, it's like, just, just be with it. That's our invitation. That's exactly when we got to get quiet. It's, it's, it's kind of like most of you at first is not, you're not going to want to do it. You're not going to want to sit down and get quiet and still, but that's exactly where we got to say, Ooh, okay. I see you. I feel you. Okay. We're scared right now. Let me just feel it a bit more, lean into it, allow it to really express itself fully. And in that exercise, we'll be guided to know what do we need? What's the scared part of me needing? probably some reassurance, some, some soothing, some comfort, just good old fashioned, like love. Like, I know we're good. We're all right. Yeah. So just be with it a little bit. And that might help soften what you're calling. Like sometimes I do, I just got to like force myself into that mindset and just might make that, that, that road a little smoother in some way. So play with that a little bit, maybe. What about what anybody else? Like what's resonating or, or especially a question?
Um, you had talked about kids and I always feel like my kids are, you know, my best teachers and, mm -hmm. and they make it black and white. I think as adults, we really complicate things. Um, and you were talking about the attention. So that emotion or that feeling that doesn't get attention starts to talk louder and starts to get louder like a child. And my daughter lately has been, well, she always has been loud, but um, even louder. And she won't even let her little brother get in trouble. Like he'll do something wrong. And then she does something like 10 times worse or, or she just starts yelling and she kind of um, then attracts all of the negative attention. And so it really, I mean, that example was like, so rang true to me because I could see it. I could visually see yeah. it. You know, sometimes we don't always know this emotion that comes up that's like starts to nag at us. But when it's a child yelling, <laughs> like you can't ignore it. So um, I just thought that was, that was mm. a great, example of of how our emotions speak to us as well oh good good love it i think i need to give her more attention uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> so you know just a little bit about about me because i didn't really i just kind of jumped in here with you guys um there's a couple of things i know um holly encouraged me to share with you all of yeah you know, i'm physically located here in the vale valley with my practice here we are um completely working via telehealth and it's been um, actually quite surprising how effective uh it is and we're really kind of re-looking at um restructuring how we provide services and likely sticking with telehealth um, for the majority of our services. Um, you know, people like the flexibility. And um, so with that being said, if, if I can be of any help to you or your team, please, please know that we're a resource here for the state. It's not just the Vail Valley. So we work with people across the state um, and, and clearly even more so now that it's, it's more remote. Um, I think Holly's gonna include a, a link to this really um, powerful workshop. We are holding in person. This isn't a, a video thing. Uh, August 14th and 15th. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Holly. Wow, look at that. Uh, <laughs> so this is, yeah, it's the release workshop. We held this at the end of June, sold out, and it's a partnership with myself, um, Stacy, with uh, Dow Kami, and then Chelsea, who owns Anahata Yoga in Minturn, Colorado, which is just, you know, in the Vale Valley. Together, we've really uh, created this powerful experience of yoga, breath work. Um, I guide contemplative conversations. Hello, here we are in meditation. And then Stacy has this very powerful five point acupuncture process. To ha it, it literally works with the nervous system of releasing um, grief, fear, stress, trauma. The, the effects were, um, it's hard to describe what people experienced over this three hour workshop and the prolonged effects um, of, you know, the day after, five days after, you know, feeling more energy, um, a release of, of trauma that people haven't been able to release for life, their whole life. Um, and so I know we're all needing a lot of healing right now. And especially as givers, you know, in, in the, the health and wellness, you know, spa world, you guys are healers and givers. We need to remember that we need space like this and like this workshop to really uh, tend and care for ourselves. So I, I would love to see you all there and see you in person. It sounds like we'll probably have to wear masks at this one. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a really powerful experience that we're excited to be cultivating and giving. So that's that, unless there's any other questions. I have a question. <laughs> um, is that just, are those just different days? Are they all the days that you go or is it one day? One, three it's hours one hours? day. It's one day. Yes. Great question. Yeah. So uh, when you click on the link, it's all through the Anahana Yoga Studio website. So you might, you'll have to scroll down to the date. So we know um, August 14th and 15th and then also again in September. And the thing is, so even for those who 
participate in June. The, the effects are about, because we do two rounds of the acupuncture. And so Stacy says they, the effects last about two to three weeks. And so we want to have this be sustainable. And so many people will be coming back and doing this again, right? So it's kind of a built-in kind of wellness program. Um, and this model, uh, in, in part, what, what, what we are discovering is we heal much better together. And, and I, what I've been learning more in my practice and feeling so much more called to things like this and community work is there's, some, there's great limitations to just working one-on-one -on -one with people. We need to be doing this together and, and begin to learn how to open up more. I think we're all so scared, so we just come in and do our one-on-one -on -one therapy, right? And so we need to be breaking out of this and making it safe for us to build communities of healing too. So, yeah. Where is it at again? That's in Minturn, Angie, um, right at Anahana Yoga Studio. It's a really cozy, beautiful space. Mm -hmm. So for those of you in Denver, we had, some, we had a number of people drive up from Denver and just, you know, make a, make a weekend of it. So... Otherwise, I'll see you guys in August, August 19th, yeah? August 19th, yeah. So we have a really full calendar for um, our association events. Um, you will, uh, next, actually Tuesday, we have Spa Sales Strategy um, with Kayla Childress of Mindful Luxury. So kind of keeping that mindful theme. Um, but that's next Tuesday at um, 4 p.m., uh, Mountain Standard Time. And then we have events every single week um, mm -hmm. scheduled all the way through um, mid-September. The calendar on our website will be updated um, hopefully by the end of this week, but for sure, at least for the first few days of August. And then, yes, I have you again um, Wednesday, August 19, uh, 5 p.m. Again, invite your teams, invite your spouses. I mean, I don't care, everybody, you know, yeah. to be involved. There's no, um, no one that needs to be left out from this type of conversation and this type of like, um, you know, opportunity to be mindful and to connect with each other and even maybe more importantly, connect with ourselves. So um, I look forward to seeing all of you next week. Um, Jessica, of course, you're always welcome to join those um, other events too. I know you're a very busy woman, um, but please feel free to join us also any, anytime. Thank you. Um, thank you again so much. And I'm super, super grateful to have this partnership. So thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you all. Thank you all. I hope this is helpful. It so. is. Everyone have a wonderful Wellness Wednesday and we'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> Bye. Bye y'all.